Hello friends, today we are going to see the trick to solve current mirror based BJT sums. Okay, so before we start with the trick, let us see the content that we are going to discuss in this video. We are going to see how to judge whether the circuit is of current mirror circuit. Then we are going to see the mandatory condition for current mirror circuit. And at the end, we will solve variety of gate sums that are asked in gate exam. And we will see the trick to solve that type of sums. Okay, so here you can see this is a basic current mirror circuit. Okay. So if you see this type of circuit, you can say that this circuit will be current mirror circuit. Okay. But you have to confirm it. Okay. So you will confirm it by checking the mandatory condition of current mirror circuit. Okay. So let's see the mandatory condition for current mirror circuit. So the circuit should have transistor that are properly matched. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is that your transistor that your transistor should be properly matched okay now what this properly matched means basically your area of transistor should be same your base voltage should be same your collector current should be same and your base current should be same okay so basically you can see all the parameters of both the transistors should be same then only you are going to say that this circuit is of current mirror circuit okay and this circuit is also called a single current mirror circuit because here you have only one mirror okay so basically here you can see the collector current of this transistor is reflected here so basically you are saying that the collector current of this transistor is mirrored in this transistor collector current okay so here you can see the mirror is one that's why this is called a single current mirror circuit and here you can see that you have more than one mirror that's why you are going to say that this circuit is of multiple current mirror circuit okay now you know how to judge whether the circuit is current mirror circuit you know the mandatory condition for current mirror circuit and now let us derive the formula that we are going to use for current mirror circuit okay so when your beta is finite okay basically when your current gain is finite current gain of transistor okay so here if you apply the kcl at this node you can see i reference is equals to ic1 plus ib1 plus ib2 right here you have two transistors so basically there will be two base currents one for this transistor and one for this transistor okay so you have ib1 here ib2 here okay so here you will say that i reference is equals to ic1 plus ib1 plus ib2 okay so here you can see i reference is equals to ic1 plus ib1 plus ib2 okay so since we know that the mandatory condition for current mirror circuit is that ib1 should be equals to ib2 which is equals to ib and ic1 should be equals to ic is equals to ic2 okay so if we replace all this term with this ib and ic we will get i reference is equals to ic plus 2 ib okay so if we simplify it basically if we convert this ib into ic basically we want the relation between ic and i reference so that's why what we are doing is we are converting all the equations all the terms in ic and i reference okay so here you can see we will have i reference is equals to ic plus 2 ic by beta okay so now if we take ic common then we will get i reference is equals to ic 1 plus 2 by beta okay now if we shift this term at this side what we will get we will get ic is equals to beta upon beta plus 2 into i reference okay so this is the equation that we have to use whenever we will see the current mirror circuit and in the question it is mentioned that your beta is finite okay now this was the formula when we were given beta is equals to finite but what about beta is equals to infinite okay so for this you have to simply put beta equals to infinite in this equation okay so here if you put beta equals to infinite we will have infinite by infinite okay and you can say that this is invalid okay so for that you have to take beta common okay so if you take beta common you will be having this okay. beta you have taken common so you will have beta 1 upon beta 1 plus 2 by beta right so now if you put beta equals to infinite you will get 1 upon 1 plus 0 okay so you can say for beta equals to infinite i reference is simply equals to ic okay so this was for single current mirror circuit okay for multiple current mirror circuit it's just very simple you can see for beta equals to finite we have ic is equals to beta upon beta plus 1 plus n okay and for beta equals to infinite we have simply ic equals to i reference here also you can see for single current mirror circuit we were having n equals to 1 right basically we were having a mirror 1 okay so if we put n equals to 1 you, we will left with the same formula what we got here okay beta upon beta plus 2 if you 
put n equals to 1 we will have beta upon beta plus 2 okay okay so in short we will say that whenever we have beta equals to finite then we are going to use this formula and whenever we have beta equals to infinite then we are going to use this formula for single mirror circuit we will just put n equals to 1 and for multiple we will put whatever the number of current mirror is mentioned in the question okay so we are going to use all this formula in the sums and we will see how easy the sums become when you know all this formula okay so now let's start with the first sum here you can see we have a two perfectly matched silicon transistors are connected as shown okay the value of current i is okay so in the question it is mentioned that your beta is very high basically you can assume it as infinite okay and the options are here so you can see the circuit is here you have to find out this i okay let us assume this is i reference okay so first let us find out the i reference okay so if we apply the kvl here basically here you can see we have a path right okay so if we apply the kvl in this path we will get 0 plus 1k into i reference plus 0 0.7 minus 5 okay so this is what i have written here 0 1k i reference plus 0 0.7 minus 5 is equal to 0 so we can say that i reference will be simply 5 minus 0 0.7 is 4.3 basically these terms are taken at this side okay so you will get all the things into in negative sign okay so you will get 5 minus 0 0.7 is nothing but 4.3 upon 1k it is nothing but 4.3 milliampere okay so you got i reference is equals to 4.3 milliampere now in the question it was mentioned that beta is very high so we are going to use the formula this one for beta is equals to infinite ic is equals to i reference so we will say that collector current of this transistor that be basically this i is nothing but i reference okay so we will say that i is nothing but 4.3 milliampere so our correct option will be this c okay now let us see the another sum this sum was asked in gate ec 2004 two perfectly matched silicon transistors are connected as shown in figure the value of current i is okay so if you observe this equation this question is very similar to the first question but the only difference is that here you have beta is equals to 1000 basically you have beta given it is not infinite here okay so same thing we are going to do here first we are going to find out i reference okay so the very similar step that you are going to apply kvl here and you will get i reference as 4.3 milliampere okay but we are not going to use the formula that ic is equals to i reference here we have beta is equals to finite so we are going to use the formula this one that is ic is equal to beta upon beta plus 1 plus n into i reference okay so here you can see n we have one okay basically we have one current mirror okay so we are going to say that ic is equals to beta upon beta plus 2 into i reference okay so if we put beta as 1000 so here you can see we will have 1000 upon 1002 okay so it is nearly equals to 1 okay so we will say that ic is equals to i reference for this condition also and we will have the same answer that is 4.3 milliampere okay so don't get shocked here here you can see that beta value was actually very high so here we got the same answer but you have to follow this step only okay basically if you have beta equals to finite then you have to go for this step only okay you can't directly say that ic is equals to i reference considering that beta will be very high okay so you have to go by the formula basically you have to go by the steps okay now let us see this third sum this sum was asked in ias objective paper consider the current mirror circuit and neglect base current and find i dash i1 and i2 okay so here you can see we have this circuit this circuit is seems to be complex but it is not that complex okay and note one thing the blue colored one was given in the question black colored one i have marked separately okay so here you can see in the question it was given that i dash is here okay since we know that this is a current mirror circuit so we can say all the transistor are properly masked okay so we will have the same area here okay so we can say that the resistance provided by this transistor will be same so the equal current will be divided okay so we will say here we will have i dash by 3 i dash by 3 i dash by 3 okay similarly here we will have i1 by 2 i1 by 2 so from the concept of current mirror circuit when we have beta unknown okay so if in the question beta is not given then you have to assume that beta is equals to infinite by default okay so here we have beta is equals to infinite so we are going to say that i reference will be is equals to ic okay so collector current will be equals to i reference okay so here you can see 
the collector current of this transistor is i dash by 3 okay it is not i dash okay i dash is getting divided into three collector currents okay so here we are going to compare this 20 micro ampere with this i dash by 3 okay so we are going to say that 20 micro ampere will be equals to i dash by 3 okay so we can say that i dash will be equals to 20 micro ampere into 3 okay so we will have i dash equals to 60 micro ampere okay similarly we are going to compare this 20 micro ampere with this i1 by 2 not by i1 okay so we will say that 20 micro ampere will be equals to i1 by 2 okay so we are going to say that i1 will be 40 micro ampere this 2 get multiplied to this 20 micro ampere okay similarly with this transistor that you can see that i reference is nothing but equals to i2 basically the collector current of this transistor right so we will say that i2 is nothing but 20 micro ampere okay so these are the three currents that were required for this question okay now let us see the fourth sum this is very interesting this question was asked in ec 2010 in the silicon bjt circuit shown below assume that the emitter area of transistor q1 is half that of m transistor of q2 okay so here from this you can see that area of transistor 1 is not equals to area of transistor 2 basically they are saying that transistors are not properly matched okay so let's see what are the things that we have to do when we don't have transistor properly matched okay basically you can say that this is not the actual current mirror circuit okay but we have the configuration same as current mirror circuit okay so let's see what are the things that we have to do in this sum okay so here you can see the question was to find out the value of current IO okay so basically you have to find out this current okay we have beta is equal to 700 and beta is equal to 715 okay so you can see that beta is quite same okay so we can say that beta is equals to same okay since we want the approximately answer so we can assume this okay so now let's discuss with this emitter area of transistor q1 is half that of q2 okay so for that we have to understand this equation first that we know that current is nothing but v by r okay so we can say that current is inversely proportional to the resistor okay and here from this equation we can say that resistance is rho l by a okay so we can say that r is inversely proportional to a in the sense we can also say that a is inversely proportional to r okay so we have two equation that i is inversely proportional to r and a is also inversely proportional to r so we can say that i is basically directly proportional to a okay so if the area is getting changed then we are going to say that current is also going to change okay so here you can see we have emitter area of q1 is half that of q2 okay so we are going to say that current in q1 is also half that of q2 okay so basically we will have i is equals to 1 by 2 i o okay so here you can see i is this current i o is this current okay so we are saying that i is nothing but 1 by 2 into i o so io will be 2i basically we have to find out io so that's why we are rewriting this equation okay now the thing which we can find out directly is that this i current okay so if we apply kvl here so we will get 0 plus 9.3 k into i plus 0 0.7 here you can see in the question it is mentioned that silicon bjt is used okay so here we are considering plus minus 0 0.7 okay so if we apply KVL, we will get 0 plus 9.3 K into I plus 0 0.7 minus 10 is equals to 0. So we will have I is equals to 10 minus 0 0.7 is basically 9.3 upon 9.3 K. It is nothing but 1 milliampere. Okay. So we have I. IO will be simply 2 multiplied by I. Okay. So we have IO is equals to 2 milliampere. Okay. So the correct option for this sum will be 2 milliampere. Basically this B option. Okay. So if we conclude this video, here we have seen how to judge the current mirror circuit. We have seen the mandatory condition for the current mirror circuit. We have derived the formula to use in the sum for multiple as well as for single. We have seen the basic circuit sums. We have seen the advanced circuit sums, okay, where we will have more than one current mirror circuits. Then at the end, we have seen the sum when we have the transistor which are not properly matched okay so basically we can say the circuit was not actually current mirror circuit but still we were able to get the equation from which we can get the answer okay so that's it for today thank you guys